All right, picking up again. Here we go. This is part three of your Math 2 Unit 10 test review. All right, so we have to change these things around a little bit. We're going to raise the product to power and then <clears throat> simplify it by writing it in radical form. So let's begin here. I have 27x to the 2 thirds power. <clears throat> That's like writing it as 27 to the 2 thirds and then x to the 2 thirds. So that's what it looks like to, um, to a power. I could rewrite that then as I start to move it over to radical form by saying this is 27 cubed root, because there's my cubed, and the whole thing is squared times, in this case here, x squared and the cubed root, because there's my two thirds there. Now when I keep simplifying that out, the cube root of 27 is actually, um, sorry, 3, right? Cube root of 27 is 3, but 3 squared is 9. I can't simplify that anymore, so I still have the cube root of x squared. Number 40, another crazy one here. I have 81 to the 3 fourths power. And then I end up with x, and because this is x to the third times 3 fourths, I end up with x to the 9 fourths. So that's my, uh, my thing as a product, raising the product to a power. Now I've got to convert that over, so here we go. This becomes 81 cubed root to the fourth power or that 3 there for now, to the 4th power, times x to the ninth power, and root 4. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit funky. Okay, so here we go. Uh, what number is the, this cubed going to be? Well, that's going to be a little bit different. So let's see, if I had um, 81, I need some more space here actually, Let's see. Get this guy here. If I take 81, can I break it up into something that would um, be a number three times? If I make this 9 times 9, 9 times 9 is 81. Well, that's not too bad. So that's, that's okay in a sense, right? So I have that there. But um, 9 times 9, I'm just right here, 3, 3 fourths, right? Oh, sorry, that's what I did wrong. Sorry, I need something that's funky. Back it up, back it up. Okay, sorry, this is my exponent, and that's my radical. See how easy it's messed up? So that's cubed. This is the fourth. That's what I'm thinking. That's the fourth. So I break that apart, and now I have, break it apart, three, 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 three. So the fourth root of 81 is actually 3. But I need to go ahead and cube that number, like right here. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. So I know I have a 27 for my whole number there. But now I still have this x to the ninth and the fourth root with that thing. So I have to figure out what do I do with that, that stuff there. Here's a way of thinking about it x to the ninth means 9x's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay? A fourth root means, let's, like we do with the 3, let's find four of these things. Here's one. Here's one. And I have one left over. That means I can take an x out and another x out of this part here. And I still, underneath the, four, the root 4, still have 1x remaining. x times x is also x squared. So I end up with, when I look at what is the x to the ninth root 4 of all that, I end up with x squared and then root 4x. So a little complicated, but not too bad if you break it apart. Oops, there's my x squared and... 
27 x squared and then 4 root of x. Right, so x squared, 4 root of x, there. A little strange. One more of these ones. All right, so I have 16 and all that gobbledygook. So this becomes 16, and I distribute the 3 halves to 3 over 2. And I have x, and 5 times 3 over 2 is 15 over 2. And that's what I start off with for my exponential form. Now to break this apart then, to move it over to this radical form, this becomes 16 square root cubed for that part right there. The square root of 16 is 4, and 4 cubed is 4 times 4 is, is 16, 16 times 4 is 64. So I'll write that over there for now. This part becomes, like we did last time, it's the square root of 15 x's. All right, so think of it this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. A lot of x's there, right? So what I'm looking for are pairs because the square root, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 x's that I can take out from there, and I still have one left over. So that's rewritten like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 square root of x. These are all to the first power. So when I add those up, what do I come up with? x to the 7th and the square root of x. So that's what's left for my answer there. Okay, a little funky, um, just something to work on there. Okay, turn the page. This should be our last page here. And here we go. I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired. This is minute number 27 of this review packet. <laughs> so here we go. 42. Again, the highlighted ones are ones you should focus on. All right, so when I multiply, I'm going to add things together. So let's go ahead and work on just the fraction part because that's what really is important for now. My base is going to be an 8. So I have really 1 6 plus 1 fourth a common denominator. I can make a common denominator uh, 12. That's fine. Right? So 12 and 12. 6 times 2 is 12. So 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times 3 is 12. 1 times 3 is 3. Now I add 3 plus 2 and I have 5 twelfths and my base stays the same. So I have 8 and 5 twelfths. Now it wants me to write it in radical form. So even though I put a box around it, that's wrong. Oops, sorry about that. So let's make this to the, this is my root, 12. And the whole thing is to the fifth power. That's my actual answer. Sorry about that. Okay, now letter B. I have 2 thirds plus 5 thirds, which equals 7 thirds. And this is D to the 7 thirds. I want to write it in radical form. So this becomes the cubed root of d to the seventh power. Now, do I want to stop there? Well, one thing I could do is I could take a lot of those d's out of there, just like I did before um, with my x's on the previous problem. So let's say I rewrote that as d, 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 I'm looking for three, sets of three, and then d, 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 and another d. So if this is the cubed root of all that, I could take a d out, and another d out, and I only have one d left. So two d's together actually makes d squared, and I'm left with just one d in the radical. So a little bit different, but I could continue to simplify that um, if I chose to do that. Let's do number letter c. I'm going to write it. Go ahead and write it up here for now. So c, I have one fifth plus a one third. My common denominator I'm going to choose is 15. This is times 5 times 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. So I have 8 fifteenths, and I have a 2 as my, my base. And so for C, it's rewritten as um, 2 to the 8th, sorry, the 2 to the 8th power, and it's the root 15. Now I don't have 15 twos in there, so I can't take anything out, so I'll just stop right there. 
And finally for D, I have 4 thirds plus a 3 fifths. Again, I'm going to go with a 15. This is a times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. This is a times 5. So 4 times 5 is 20. 20 plus 9 is 29 over 15. 15. And that's a Q. Now, this one, though, I can simplify further. So here's what happens is when I rewrite this, I have Q root 15, and I have 29 of the Qs inside of there. Well, think of it this way. After you've done a couple of these, are there at least 15 Qs inside of that? Yeah, there are. So I do 29 minus 15, and I'm going to take those out of there. So I'm going to take out a whole bunch of Qs, 15 of them. And so I have Q on the outside, All right? That's my one group. And because 15, 15 Qs equals 1 on the outside. And on the inside, I'm left with 14. So I'm going to put Q root Q to the 14th. Number 43. All right, write an exponential form, then solve for X. So here we go. This works like this. I have 16, and there's my exponent over 2 times 16, and there's my exponent and 2. I have the same denominator, so I can just add across. So this equals 16 and then 13 over 2. That's equal to what it says here, 16x over 2. So my missing number is 13. x equals 13. Number 44. I have 64 to the 7 thirds there times 64 to the 7 thirds there. We want to set that equal to 64x over 3. Common denominator already, so I can add that. 64, 14 over 3 equals 64x over 3. So my missing number here is 14. Number 45. So I'm a little bit, a little silly here. I have 8 to the 3 halves times 8 to the, remember this one, negative 4, 6. Okay, because on the denominator. I need a common denominator, so I'll turn this to a 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5, 6. I have an 8 there. Set that equal to 8 over x over 6. And my missing number is 5. Number 46, same idea. I have 7 to the 3 fourths power times 7 to the 2 fifths, but it's a negative 2 fifths. A common denominator here would be 20. 20. 4 times 5 is 20. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. So 2 times 4 is a negative 8. 15 minus 8 is going to be equal to 7. And 20, my denominator stays the same. And my base stays the same. And that's equal to 7 over x over 20. So my missing number is 7. Number 47. It's a fun one here. I have 3 to the 1 fourth. And that is to the root 6 to the 1 6 power. I'm making that equal to 3 over 1 over x. All right. So exponent to exponent, I multiply. So 1 times 1 is 1, 4 times 6 is 24, equal to 3 and 1 over x. So my missing number in this case is 24. And one final one like that. We have 2 to the 1 half to the cube root, 1 third power, equal to 2, 1 over x. Multiply. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 3 is 6 equals 2 to 1x, and my missing number is 6. All right, our last section of questions here, number 49.
Again, it's highlighted, so you need to be able to do this. Um, and there are multiple ways of solving this, so it's not just one answer here. So I need to find two numbers to break my 14 apart to make it m plus n. So that could be something like a is equal to, um, in this case, I want it to be 14. So I could do a 10 plus 4. And 10 plus 4 is 14, right? Uh, if I want to make it a different way, and n times n, I could say a to the 7th power, and this becomes squared like so. Okay. And real quick here. Yeah. All right. That's the next one here. I have to get a negative 12, so I could say, I went ahead and said, let's make it negative 14. Um, plus 2, because negative 14 plus 2 is negative 12. For the exponential form, I could say x to the um, 12, so x to the 6 times a negative 2, and that could work there. For p to 20, I could say p is um, 10 plus 10. And over here, I could say p is uh, 5 to the 5th power, and then to the fourth. However you want to do that. Again, a lot of different ways you could change that. Not a big deal. All right, that concludes the review here for this first review worksheet. Again, this is review sheet for unit 10, and there were three parts of this. So good luck. Take your time. Review those highlighted ones, and hope you do well on your tests.